And when we understand its true purpose, we can open up to it. We can open ourselves up to fear. Welcome to the Ecstatic Woman Podcast. Together, along with some amazing guests, we'll explore and tap into our inner wisdom and have meaningful conversations about developing our ability to self-discover, create, and be present in the world, while also uncovering new ways to think, feel, and cultivate our sense of empowerment so we can live our lives ecstatically. Now let's welcome our host, Alara Hello, Singh. hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ecstatic Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Alara Sage. I am a womb shaman and activator of Kundalini Shakti, which is your creative life force energy. And I help men and women to create exactly what they desire, no matter the obstacles. And today is a solo episode where we go deep into a topic, just you and me. We are here alone. Today, I felt that a good conversation would be around fear. Why do we have it? <laughs> and I personally believe, believe it's very important um, and simultaneously really here to show us our potential. So why is that? How is that? How does fear show us our potential? And what can we do in the face of fear? So let's start with why do we have fear? I mean, I would reckon to say most people can agree that it is to keep us safe. We have our nervous system, we have parts of our brain and parts of our body, parts of our genetics that are here to keep us safe. Which is good. It keeps us alive, right? It's, it's the understanding that, hey, if you're about to cross a road and there's a bunch of cars driving in front of you across it, you don't want to walk out in front of those cars. And the fear of being hit by a car will help you to not be hit by a car. And so that's all fantastic, right? The idea of being physically safe, maintaining our physical safety. I think most people would agree that fear is a a positive emotion. Now, even sometimes it can go a little far with that, right? Like for instance, I don't really like heights. Uh, for many years, I actually became a rock climber, not really out of my own choice. Uh, it was what my boyfriend was doing at the time, what his friends were doing. And simultaneously, I found it really beneficial because it had me face my fear. So, you know, my fear of heights and climbing up a rock, when you're doing it safely, you're, you're pretty much maintaining a very, very safe space for yourself. So we could still argue even with the context of maintaining our physical safety. Sometimes fear, you know, sticks its dirty nose where maybe it doesn't fully belong, right? Or some people feel fear around flying or fear of the water, these kinds of things that we could argue may or may not actually be keeping them physically safe. But let's talk about, you know, fear of change, fear of transformation, right? Fear of expansion. This isn't so tangible. There isn't necessarily a car that is coming at you at 60 miles an hour, right? There isn't necessarily a massive drop from the rock that you are currently clinging to with tiny bits of your fingers and tiny bits of your toes. You know, there isn't currently, you know, the plane that you're on that's potentially going to crash. Like none of that is existing in the context of conversation of just expanding yourself, changing your life, expanding your life. 
And this is when fear really does stick its nose sometimes in our business. But I'm not going to say where it doesn't belong, because even in these contexts, it has a wonderful purpose. And when we understand its true purpose, we can open up to it. We can open ourselves up to fear. We can move through it a little bit easier. And this is really what this conversation is about today. I used to use the analogy of Fight Club. If you've ever seen that movie, it is about a man who essentially has an alter ego that he ends up fighting. Um, and his alter ego fights other people as well. But the alter ego is a much cooler person <laughs> than his regular uh, personality, sense of self. And this is why I use Fight Club, because the only person that we are fighting, the only thing that we are up against is ourself in these contexts of personal expansion, transformation, radical change, you know, creating what you really desire. I've said it before, if you really connect to the essence of your soul, your heart's desires, your most authentic, unique genius, those are all the same things, by the way, you will feel fear. It will scare you. That version of yourself, the idea of becoming that version of yourself will scare you. And that's where you know you're kind of on the right track. It'll do this simultaneously, like light you up and scare you at the same time. So that fear is really our ego in that context. It really all fear is of the ego, uh, even the physical, the fear of physical death, because it's only the ego that dies when we physically die. So the ego is the only one that fears anything. And it fears physical death because it actually dies, whereas our being, our soul, our energy, even our body, you know, re decomposes back into pure creative life force energy. And we move back into our soul and back into the, you know, the next evolution of our being. But our ego dies. The you that is of this life, your your name and your personality and all of the, the fingerprint, quote unquote, that creates you will never be again. This is a unique expression of divinity. You are a unique expression of divinity. There's only one of you ever in the entire universe and the entire entirety of creation itself. That's pretty spectacular. So that version of you, you know, dies, goes away. So the ego fears this. And because the ego fears its death, this is also what happens when we are desiring to transform, desiring to make radical changes and shifts. It is our ego that has become comfortable with who we are. It is our ego that says, I am this, and this is what my life looks like. And even though there is a part of us that wants something different, that's not to say our ego wants something different. Our ego is quite happy to just remain the same with as little change as possible, because that change is oftentimes very, very similar to death itself. You may even hear the concept of ego death in spirituality, where in all honesty, the, the ego doesn't usually die. You have to really transcend uh, the ego for it to dissolve completely. And it's not very practical because you don't really 
care to be human anymore. So for the vast, 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 vast 99.9999999% of people, your ego is important. So we don't kill the ego. The ego doesn't die, but the ego continues to shed layers of itself and your authentic you, your soul, the essence of your being shines more and more through the ego. So you could think of the ego shedding these layers that distort your true essence, that distort your unique genius. And through those quote unquote ego deaths, those layers fall away and more of that light of self is revealed. So I just had an ego death yesterday, yesterday into today, just via some energetic alignments, some intentional work that I'm doing in my space. I had an ego quote unquote death or dissolve. Uh, it's really an ego restructuring, right? Or an ego release. And it can feel very intense, right? We can, it can feel like, well, I, I don't know who that version of me was. I also don't know who I'm becoming. So you're in this in between phase for a period of time. I moved through them very, very quickly now where I'm only in that period of phase for a couple of hours, uh, where I used to be in them for several days. It's, there's a lot of confusion in that space and there's a lot of chaotic vibratory energy in your field. So that's really what an ego death is. But before the ego dies, <laughs> dissolves, releases a layer, you take off, I like to also say you shed a, a layer of clothing to reveal a layer underneath that is much more intimate of who you are. Before that happens, you tend to hit fear and you'll oftentimes experience that fear as it's all happening because of that quote unquote ego death. So again, the ego's not dying. <clears throat> I'm just using that term. I'm using the term for two reasons. I'm using the term because it's used in spirituality and I want to explain it better. I'm also using it because that's what the ego fears. So that's where fear comes from. Even though the truth of it is, is that the ego doesn't die until you physically die. Okay. But the ego believes that it is going to die. The ego believes that it is dying. And so it creates all of this fear in order to really protect itself and also protect the version of you that you are and really in a beneficial way, I like to say, it kind of throws out a question mark. Yo, what's up? Are we sure this is what we want to be doing? Like, are we sure? This is what we want to be doing because it's not to say that all change, uh, all transformation is in alignment with your heart, with your true essence. I would dare to say that all change and transformation is beneficial and is perfect because it is always serving you in some aspect of your experience as divinity in human form. However, some experiences are going to be more aligned with more in uh, energetic uh, harmonization, energetic resonance to your most authentic expression than others. Okay. So let me give you an example. Maybe you decided to quit your job and take on a whole new profession, a whole new career that you're doing because you were told is going to make you a lot of money. And I almost did this, not in that same context. When I was 19, I didn't know what I wanted to be. And all the rage in, in 1999 was computers. And everybody was saying, computer programming, computer this, you're going to make all this money, you know. And that's very true, is it not? Like we could definitely say from that point forward, people who align themselves in those careers definitely align themselves uh, with money. 
But my higher self was not having it. Uh, and I was redirected to do something else, to actually leave and travel the world and become a scuba diving instructor and have a completely different life. But I almost did that route. So using that as an example, you quit your career and you think, well, I'm just not making enough money. What could I make a lot of money from? What's going to give me this false sense of security, this false sense of happiness? Oh, okay, this, this job, right? I'm going to do that. Well, you might be lucky. That might be in alignment with your heart. Uh, or it could just be just totally the wrong direction for you that is fueled by insecurity uh, and lack of self-worth. Another example would be, you know, a, a kid in maybe college or high school and they want to do something or they don't know what they want to do and their parents project onto them something that they should be and then they shift into that. They shift into becoming that. They shift into that person, right? So both of those experiences are going to benefit us as a whole because you get to experience what it feels like to not be in alignment. And guess what? It hurts. But uh, it's not going to really unravel you, transform you into your authentic self quickly. So any of these changes that we are making towards our higher self, towards our higher version of ourself, towards our most authentic self, even though we can feel the intu intuitive hit, even though we can really feel the magnetic pull towards it, that it feels right, that it, it just resonates in our body on some level, it's going to still elicit a level of fear. And this is where I was speaking about Fight Club. So maybe I brought Fight Club in a little too early in the conversation. Didn't really make sense, maybe, when I was speaking to it. But Fight Club comes in at this point because really the only person that you are up against is yourself. The only thing that you are up against at that point when you say, I'm choosing to become something different. I'm choosing to radically alter myself because it has to be some level of a big enough gap to really trigger the fear. I mean, if you're just making tiny, tiny little changes, uh, you probably won't trigger the fear so much. But if you're trying to make some substantial changes to yourself, and sometimes the more the substantial change, the more vibrational dissonance between this version of you and the version you are attempting to step into, the bigger sense of fear can exist, the bigger resistance, all of the things that are literally creating that dissonance. And so when we align to those and we say, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to do that, I want to become that, you know, oftentimes we can get that first hit of like, yes, 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 that feels amazing. That's exactly what I want to do. And then bam, we're hit with fear. We're hit with subconscious beliefs of who do you think you are? You can't do this. This is crazy. All these things, right? The saboteur and the ego mind attacking us in some way though you're not a victim, of course, <laughs> um, to stop it, to, to stop the shift, right? And so this is the point where, you know, we have to face ourselves. And this is the fight club of, of really stepping up to that version of you that you are seemingly fighting your ego, your saboteur. And instead of fighting, because that's not actually what we want to be doing, we want to be loving our ego and loving our saboteur then we can proceed into, you know, really transforming very, very powerfully in, in a very, very short amount of time if we are willing. So fear is really beneficial because it shows us where we are potentially going to radically transform ourselves. Right. When we feel that fear, we can say, OK, that's the ego saying, whoa, 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 there's a lot of change here that you're suggesting. Are you going to throw me out with the bathwater? Right. And so that's a that's a signal. That's a level of awareness to say, ah, there's the fear. Yay. <laughs> I'm on the right track because you know what? I don't want to be this version of myself anymore. I want to really shift. I want to really change. And therefore, 
I need to really address this fear that I am feeling. Okay. So it's beneficial in that it shows us that we are on the brink of transformation. And as I said, if you're feeling a lot of fear and yet you feel called in that direction and yet it feels aligned and yet you feel the intuitive hits and you feel a great deal of fear, then there is a level of not real measurement per se, but you can definitely bring the reflection, like the harder, more intense that reflection is back to you. You can definitely say there's some level of measurement to the potential of your transformation in that process. So I always invite people to be willing to see their fear, right? Because that means they're moving in the right direction. We want to transform. We want to expand. We want to really know ourselves as our greatest potential. And it, and if you do, maybe you don't want to. I would say the majority of people would agree to that, even though the majority of people do not take action towards their fear. They do not step into that with themselves. They allow fear to stop them, to block them. And that is a choice. That's it. You can make up all the reasons why your fear is different or this particular circumstance or whatever it is, the truth is the hard, raw horse tablet to swallow, the horse pill that you got to get down your throat without water is that it is simply your choice. Not to say it's going to be easy just by making the choice. And again, the bigger the version you're stepping into, yeah, it's going to be challenging. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But there's a difference between challenge and just not choosing not to do it, right? Not setting yourself up for the challenge, not putting in the work, finding excuses, creating excuses. I speak of this a lot. Your saboteur is a magician. The shadow of the archetype is saboteur. The light archetype of the saboteur is a magician. Your saboteur is a magician. So you either have the saboteur working against you where it will, and I'm not joking when I say magically create issues in your life to derail you from this transformation. That could be, you know, family members getting sick. It could be something, it's always something outside of yourself that seemingly, oh my gosh, now I have to like do this. I don't, now I don't have time to work on myself. I don't have the means. I don't have the time. I don't have whatever it is, the space to do what I was going to do. Yeah, the saboteur in its dark magic succeeded because dark magic is about fear. So you used dark magic on yourself to derail yourself. That's the actual vibrational truth of that. Now, the light aspect of the saboteur is the magician. And this is where you learn to collapse time space and magically shift more into alignment, faster, sooner, stronger, more clear, whatever, through your magician, through the light aspect. And that is using white magic with yourself. And we do that by loving the saboteur, by acknowledging first and foremost the fear, like literally looking at it. So I was just explaining to you my ego death that happened the last couple of days. And one of the ways that I work with this energy, and this is what I would recommend you do, is you go into meditation, slow down your brain waves, however that looks like for you. Um, you can just use your breath. You can use a uh, rhythmic sound like a drum and you can do guided meditation. Or if you've been meditating and you know how to drop your brain waves down, you just drop in as we call it, uh, whatever works for you. Okay. You can also use uh, like solfeggio or binaural beats that are created to slow the brain waves down and that'll make it easier for you. And so once you're, you've dropped your brain waves down, then you call forth your 
ego. Just ask your ego to show up in, in human form and notice how he or she shows up. What are they wearing? What is like their demeanor? You know, the ego is hilarious and it often represents itself um, kind of in that adolescence age of moodiness and like, <laughs> you know, like crankiness and all the things, right? Um, but it might show up scared. It might show up angry, like it could show up in any different way, right? So call it forth, but just spend a breath or two noticing how it shows up. So when I called mine forth, first off, she came forth angry. She was like, she was uh, complaining. Uh, in pertinence to, in, in relation to what I'm transforming. And so she was just basically being a victim, right? Like this, this, wham, wham, bam, 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 wham, 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 right? And then she very quickly went from that. I mean, this was in like a single breath, went from that, you know, and, and into anger, right? And then she just dropped her shoulders. And from the minute she actually came into my space, she was looking over her shoulder. And then she went into the victim and she went into the anger. And then as she kind of settled back down, she was looking over her shoulder again. And there was this energy about like, well, I'll be seen. Um, they'll see me. And I, I didn't really feel anything like I'll be seen as a fraud or I'll be, I'll be, you know, known that I'm a fraud. Cause that's a common thing. Um, got the terminology for that uh, it's there's a term for that right it wasn't really that it was more like oh they're gonna they're gonna see me and there was really fear there with her so I started to bring in the energy of love and then all of a sudden we're sitting on this park bench and she's got her head in my lap and she's like a young girl you know she's not she's like a teenager but she's got that energy of her and I'm just stroking her head and her hair and she's like curled up in like a fetal position on her side on the bench with her head in my lap and I'm just loving on her and she's scared and so I'm talking to her and then I just brought in the energy let's show her let's show her what we're gonna what it's gonna end up let's show the ego where we want to go like who we want to become so I called in that energy and we showed her and it was very very beautiful and there was all these people around us and they were sending her love and loving on her instead of that feeling where she was looking over her shoulder like they wouldn't approve or they something you know get about people so there was just this really deep healing there so that is a really powerful way to work with your ego you just ask for it to show up and you might see it you might feel it you might sense or know that it is um, another way to work with it that can sometimes help the visualization is you can um, in your mind's eye see a mirror and like watch yourself as the ego walk up to the mirror and that can sometimes help the visualization a little bit another thing um, is a body of water and so you want to love the ego you want to help them feel safe so like the example of her lying my lap it was all about like caressing her like you're safe I've got you you're on my lap you know just like you would with a child and there was this I love you and you're safe the ego needs to feel safe the saboteur which is the same as the ego it's just kind of this way that we term it wants to feel safe and of course safety is the the polarity of unsafety fear right so if we bring that in, if we bring the energy of safety, if we breathe the I am safe into the body, say it out loud to ourselves, breathe it into our body, actually acknowledge that we are literally safe in this moment, right? And then bring that energy into our ego. We can create a space where the ego softens, the, the fear softens it may not go away completely but it softens 
Okay, the saboteur stops doing the black magic. Okay, maybe it's just a voice, but the even the voice is a little bit distant now. There's a space between you and the voice, or the voice isn't coming through as much as it was. All of these ways are the ways that that happens when we allow our ego to feel loved and safe. Because the ego is not going anywhere. It's not going to die, even though ironically we call it an ego death. That's not what's happening. So help your ego feel safe. Show your ego, no, we're actually going to have a better life. Look, this is what I desire to create for us. It's always so powerful to work with these different aspects of yourself as if they're like literally another version of you, right? You can do the same with your feminine and your masculine and your child. And they're not different versions of you. They are you. But they're just ways for us to work with the different aspects of our own being. And so to kind of summarize, you know, fear is beneficial because it, it allows us to see where we're going to be making change, transformation, and the opportunity to pause and ask, is this truly in alignment with our authentic self? Is this what my heart desires? Or is this a projection or something that my mind thinks will be a good idea, right? And then if it is, and you choose to move forward in that, then speaking to your ego, speaking to your saboteur, so you can soften the fear and take the necessary action steps because you don't want to allow that fear. The resistance is another way that it shows up. The saboteur to be doing its black magic and creating drama and chaos in your life so that you can't do what you're trying to do. Any of these things you don't really want. Like, let's be honest, if you're trying to change and transform or create something that you desire, you do not want any of that. Nobody's like, oh, I just can't wait for my saboteur to come and manipulate and magically orchestrate all this drama so that I can't create what I want. Nobody says that. So then do the work. Speak to the ego. Breathe into your body, slow down your mind, spend the time addressing these things directly, directly face it. Otherwise it has power over you regardless. Okay. If you just try to avoid it, you try to bypass it, you try to do things around it, right? You're not addressing it and it's still vibrationally is just sitting there vibrating and it will affect you. So have the courage to face your fear because fear is just simply an illusion of your ego. It's a projection of your ego onto yourself. That's it. That's it. Like when you actually go into the fear, it's so ridiculous on so many man manners. Not that we you know, it's valid, but it's ridiculous. So I hope this has helped you understand the value of fear as well as given you a very clear modality to work through your fear and perhaps to see fear differently. Like, yes, okay, great. There's the fear. I know that I am taking action steps, like that I'm moving in the right direction because if I wasn't I'm just saying I want to create something, but I'm not moving energetically closer to that. Your fear is not going to show up. So the fear is a beautiful reflection that yes, it is happening vibrationally within you. And if you didn't already know, this is what I help people with. So you know, I have several different ways that I work with people. I can help people do what I call practical magic, which is for those people who are much more left brain, who, you know, really like a logical approach. Uh, not to say that there won't be spiritual and energetic inside of it, but it's a very practical way to create anything you desire. Um, I also teach how to utilize the energy of desire. It's very magnetic. 
um, playing with your masculine and feminine, feminine polarities to create what you desire. And I also enjoy uh, playing with sexual magic um, and using pleasure and the orgasm and your sexual energy to amplify uh, that which you are, are working to create and, and really send pure creative life force energy to it. So yes, 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 right? Thank you so much, my loves. Please share this episode if you feel called to. And I will see you uh, next Tuesday. Much love. Thank you for being a part of the Ecstatic Woman podcast. As you experience each new day, we want you to feel that you are capable of tapping into your inner wisdom and living your life ecstatically. If you want to be invited back to the next episode, just subscribe to our podcast. And if you need more information in the meantime, go to alarasage.com.